Hey everyone, Steve here from Big Head Tech, and a big shout out to Steve from Gamers Nexus because technically without him, I probably wouldn't have the best solution for this. But today, with his link, we have some thermal pads here from Thermal Grizzly. So I'll actually be using these. Jeez. Ugh, a lot of packing in there. Using these probably for the Azrock one as well. But let's cut some of these. Let's replace all of them. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it and see if this actually helps get the VRM temps from barely acceptable to, or excuse me, memory. I keep saying VRM, barely acceptable down to good. So I have repasted this already, but we will have to do this again here. Just take out. Luckily, this is simply four screws. And this one. Perfect. Remove this. This is really in there on the Azrock one. So what's interesting is pressure's interesting on here. We're gonna be a little more careful when we repaste this here. So we're good for width. Then just be very careful. Ideally you should measure it. I'm being lazy and I have a spare card, but it's still not an excuse. Now I'm going to cut this and see if it is about the right size. If it is, We'll be good to go. It's a little bit big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut another one. There's a plastic piece here. That's why I have that side down. We're going to make it a little bit smaller. Both scenarios here. So I'll just kind of place this on top to get the, the sizing about right. That's yeah, overhanging a little bit. So we will snip there. And it's a smidget long, so we'll also snip a little bit short here. Okay. Let's see how this one fares out. This one fares out a little bit. Yeah, that's a much better fit. So now I'm going to use this as a template. You want them to be roughly the same size, and you do want full coverage. And as little hanging off as humanly possible here. I'm actually going to fix this one a little bit. Just remember, you do have to re remove the plastic coverage, and that's the side that you want to put down also on the chips, because those will have hopefully no grease on them. And let's see, we're going to clean this up a little more here. I wish I had a coffee filter to do this, but just be very careful. Down to dry. Perfect. One thing I have learned is for GPUs, we want to spread it if possible. So I'm going to try and make this a little bit more flat because we don't want it spilling out everywhere. And try to center as much as possible. Here's what I'll do. I'll spread out this way. Because the way the pressure works, it's a little bit different than CPUs. And then I do have a little trail going over here. I want to address this. Just pull 
possible. There we go. Clean this up a little bit here. There we go. So that should be good. Clean this off up here. Perfect. Now, let's reassemble and run some games and see if this fix did anything or are these memory chips just bound to run this hot and this video had no purpose. I'm going to say probably should help a bit, but we will find out. Once I get the cooler back on. There we go. It's very important that we put this back on right here. There's that. Last one. And good, let's get her installed. So let's take a look at the thermals. When we look at stock, you guys can see up here. The memory went from 61 all the way down to 49 over ambient. VRM went from 47 to 39. I have no idea why that happened. I didn't do anything there, but good, I guess. Core stayed the same. Hotspot went up by six. Here you go. Not good there. When we went to undervolting, we went from 59 down to 45, a 14 degree drop. VRM dropped a lot even more, which you can expect with um, undervolting. Core. <sighs> When I undervolted, the core said it went up, but I mean, the reporting might be off, but essentially the core stayed the same. They're mid-40s over ambient. But then the hotspot went up by 4 degrees. So why? Well, if you think about it, there's two potential outcomes, and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to squash the one. Maybe the thermal pads were cut a specific way for a reason, for proper mounting pressure. That actually sounds very logical. But remember, if you look, if you watch the last video, I said I'm gonna, you know, try thermal paste first. Why well, didn't show you those results? You know why? Temperatures went up. Hot spot that core stayed the same. Hot spot went up. And I tried little dot in the middle, little grain of rice. Tried more. Tried less. Tried spreading. I mean, I've been working at this for several hours, and I cannot get this hot spot temperature under control. That being said putting a little bit and spreading it, making sure it's full coverage seems to be the best. I was immediately hitting 110 in some of those scenarios. And I tried Nocto, I tried Corsair, I tried, uh, where is, oh, go down there, Thermal Take, my MX4. So I've, I've tried them all. And it seems that you know, either the manufacturer has a specific thermal paste they use that just works better their application might be very specific, or here's my theory, I think the reporting's off. If the other temperatures didn't really change much at all, then logic to me says, I think the temperature's not reporting right. When I put my hand on the back of the back plate, it wasn't hot. It was warm, but it wasn't hot. You know, I've touched things that were 80, 90 degrees. But when I put my hand on the back, it was warm at best could feel it but I felt that same card when the memory is running really warm and I could I could feel it I could definitely feel there's a 20 30 Fahrenheit degree drop but I couldn't feel anywhere on that car that was running anywhere near 100 degrees Celsius I think we were running like low 90s versus upper 80s so I'm gonna honestly dismiss it as a bad sensor reporting personally that's what I think that being said it just went up it's not dangerously overheating it's in the low mid to low 90s versus upper real upper 80s so keep that in mind what i recommend doing this mod now a couple of reasons msi is probably gonna throw a fit you're pretty sure you're gonna avoid your warranty this solution is over 400 dollars for a car that you can buy sapphire pulse for 360 but i got to make a video of it 
I got to talk about what I call MSI's um, thermal pad gate because Steve from Gamers Nexus, and thank you for his work. Link in the description below for what he did on Evoke OC really inspired this video. Plus, he's the one that recommended these pads as well. So, you know, definitely a big shout out to him. And uh, it, it was a cool, fun project. I'm just going to use the card going forward. My Azrock card actually just died the other day. I don't know why, so that's being sent back. Um, but uh, this card's going to be my system going forward. It works fine. I have no problems with it. And it's running overall better. So I'm happy with that. So if you want to buy an RX 5700, link's in the description below. Hit that like button if you liked it. Hit the dislike button if you disliked it. Leave a comment. Get subscribed. Donate on Patreon. As always, this is Steve from Big Head Tech. And I'll see you all later on down the road.